the Bahamas tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Shashina Rola. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Some breaking news reaching our ZNS news desk. Confirmed reports say a Flamingo Air 15-seater aircraft number 495 from Freeport into Bimini crash landed this afternoon. Reports say the aircraft's landing gear failed, forcing pilots of the plane, identified as Captain Lyndon Mitchell and First Officer Ragave Forbes, to make a crash landing on approach to the Bimini airport. Flamingo Air officials have confirmed that no one was injured during this ordeal. Airline officials further disclosed that another flight was sent to Bimini to transport passengers who were booked to return to Grand Bahama. Now, once again, officials are investigating the crash landing of a Flamingo Air flight from Freeport to Bimini. Officials say fortunately no one was injured. ZNS News will continue to follow this developing story and bring you an update in a later newscast. Well, Grand Bahama has recorded another traffic fatality, and now in the aftermath of this deadly mishap, police are once again appealing to motorists to be more cautious while driving on our streets. Our ZNS News team was on the scene shortly after this tragic incident. Italia Hall reports. It was a tragic scene early Monday morning as the island of Grand Bahama recorded its seventh traffic fatality for the year and the first fatal accident for the month of August. Reports say that around 6.45 a.m. police received information that there was a traffic accident that involved a single male occupant on West Sunrise Highway in the area of the Regency Theater. Reports indicate that the victim is a well-known employee of the Grand Bahama shipyard. Family and friends in a state of shock as they received the news that their loved one, whom they identified as Everett Moxie, had died. Shortly after the road was cordoned off, an officer in charge of the Police Traffic Division Assistant Superintendent of Police, Kenwood Taylor, explained what officers learned once arriving on the scene. Preliminary investigations reveal that a Nissan Bluebird, which was traveling west along West Sunrise Highway, lost control of the vehicle and they ran into a pole. It was a single occupant. EMS and the fire services were dispatched. Fire services rendered assistance by way of the jaws of life, but to no avail, the driver of the vehicle succumbed. ASP Taylor says initial investigations show that speed was a factor in this fatal crash. It appears as if the driver of the vehicle may have been on his way to work. We're encouraging the motoring public to leave their residence within the required specific period of time in an effort to get to work in a timely fashion. Now Taylor is encouraging all road users to pay attention to the speed limit and to always drive with due care and attention. Refrain from texting and driving. Refrain from utilizing any instrument that can distract you from driving your motor vehicle. We have been out and about from the traffic perspective issuing some pamphlets, safety pamphlets. A week ago we have given out a total of 1,000 safety pamphlets and we will continue to sensitize the motoring public and to ensure that they are well informed of the requirements and safety tips that they can use to save lives. Italia Hall, ZNS Network News. In other news, a $30,000 award is still being offered for information into the death of a British businessman. It's been two years since the death of British visitor Edgar Dart. You may recall the businessman was killed when three masked intruders entered his mother's house in the Emerald Bay area over the bridge. Now, officer in charge of Grand Bahama, Emmerich Seymour, says while this investigation is ongoing, there has been no significant leads to further this case. Um, I can tell you that that matter is still open on investigation. Um, it's an unfortunate situation. It's still open on investigation. Um, and I want you to know, and members of the public should know that in the case of a murder, it's never closed. A murder, a murder matter, it's, you know, it can run on for, for years. But no, we don't have any new leads. We are continuing our investigation. 
Dart, his 14-year-old son, and other family members from B Britain were visiting his mother here on Grand Bahama when he was shot and killed. Police say a $30,000 reward is being offered for the arrest and conviction of the person or persons responsible. Every act of criminality perpetrated in this Bahamas, someone other than the perpetrator know something about it. These are the persons we appeal to, um, to do their civic duty, do their civic duty, and of course, bring whatever information they have to the police to assist us in solving these matters. You know, um, it's unfortunate that some members, are members of the public are of the notion that, well, the police, that's the police's job, I'm, I don't want to get involved. But that's, that's, that's a minute percentage of our population. The vast majority of, 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 of the population of the Bahamas are upright, law-abiding citizens. That's why we are so successful as an organization. Now, if you can assist with solving this or any other criminal investigation, you are urged to contact 919-911 or call your nearest police station. In other news, a Brazilian male taken into custody over the weekend. Reports indicate that a Brazilian male claimed that he arrived in Nassau some seven days ago and caught the male boat to Freeport with hopes of going to the United States. After arriving in Freeport, he claimed that he then boarded the Bolaria Sunday evening without checking in. This Brazilian stowaway was later discovered hiding on board. Officials say the lone Brazilian male had overstayed his visitor's time in this country. He is expected to be transported to the detention center and then later repatriated to Brazil. Switching gears now with thousands of Bahamians fighting poverty, and many of them on Grand Bahama, officials at the Bahamas Red Cross Society Grand Bahama Center say their work is never done as they continue efforts to help those less fortunate. Our Cleopatra Murphy spoke with Welfare Officer Samantha Russell, who appealed to the public to step up on donations so that this, so that this organization can better assist them in need. Officials say a significant portion of Grand Bahamians find themselves in a position where they cannot afford basic necessities like food and clothing. That is where Welfare Officer Samantha Roll says the Grand Bahama Red Cross Center steps in, providing 65 meals through its Meals on Wheels program daily and an additional 10 for walk-in clients. Roll says clothes are also needed and with the opening of school weeks away, school uniforms are now a necessity. Back to school is a great demand. Persons come in looking basically like for uniform, school shoes, school tennises, um, books, pencils, anything pertaining to school items. And we also had persons came in looking for snacks and stuff for their children. There are approximately five full-time volunteers helping with its programs. Roll estimates the Grand Bahama Red Cross accommodates up to 100 clients monthly seeking just clothes. The organization also helped out with Hurricane Joaquin relief and in the midst of hurricane season, she appealed for more help. You can always come in if you have it and bring in the donations because we don't know where the hurricane lies or we don't know what's going to take place. So it's best that we bring them in just so that we can be prepared and be ready if anything should occur, we'll be able to have something to work with. Rose says there are times when donations are slow and the organization runs low on supplies. Canned goods and men's clothing are also always needed, but she says bring what you have. Anything that um, you can think of, you can bring to the Red Cross because it's here. Yeah, people come daily looking for beds, um, furniture, anything. It, it, it goes a long way. Roll thanks the public for its assistance, but she says the organization needs more volunteers. She says anyone who wants to give their time can visit the Grand Bahama Red Cross Center on Jobson Avenue, Freeport to apply. Cleopatra Murphy, ZNS Network News. It is an effort to raise the standard for preschool and early child care education facilities in the Bahamas. Tonight, Sabrina Brown tells us about the requirements that have been in place for the past three years but are now being enforced. Legislation was passed in 2013 to regulate the preschool sector in the country. Since then, the enforcement of this legislation has been given top priority here on Grand Bahama. Member of the Preschool and Early Child Care Council, Violet Stubbs. When it comes to early childhood, it's not babysitting anymore. It's early childhood education. So 
everybody in the field must qualify themselves at one of our local colleges before they can work in a daycare. If there are persons in the daycare that are not trained, then that daycare will not meet the registration re requirement, and as such, we can close them down. If staff members are not fully trained, there must be some indication that they are registered in a college, and I must see proof of that. Stubbs says since the enforcement of these requirements, they have seen a significant improvement in the quality of teachers in local preschools. When I first took this position about 15 years ago, about 10% of those persons in the daycare were trained. But when I left that office about um, a few months ago, about 95% were trained. So unless there's a turnover of staff, I'm quite comfortable with the amount of persons that are trained in the Grand Bahama District. The veteran educator also noted that preschoolers are now better prepared to enter grade one. A few years ago, there were less than 10% of children who were ready for grade one. But I'm happy to say now more than 90% of children entering first grade are ready, thanks to our trained teachers. She is making this appeal to parents in search of a good early child care center. Don't pick any school, any and every school to leave your child at. Make sure that school has a registration certificate from the Ministry of Education. Once you see that certificate on the wall of registration, then you know that all of the requirements have been met. If you do not see that certificate, that school is not registered with us and your child's health can be in danger. Sabrina Brown, ZNS Network News. Well, there are about three more weeks left before students across the country head back into the classrooms for the start of the 2016-2017 academic school year. Tonight, a local physician is urging all parents to add a specific checkup to their must-do list before their children go back to school. While many parents are busy preparing for their children to go back to school, clinical director and physician Dr. Catherine Adderley says many will not make time for their child to see a dentist. Unfortunately, she says, this can have some repercussions later on in the school year. It is really important because we focus a lot on getting kids cosmetically prepared for school, buying new school uniforms, fresh haircuts and whatnot, but we need to focus a bit more on getting them physically and mentally prepared for school because a lot of kids, they miss school because of dental pain, minor health issues that could have been taken care of. And for kids, dental health, 90% of kids' dental problems are preventable. Well, more than 90% really. And a proper cleaning and checkup at least twice a year can start them on the road to good health for the whole school year. And while some may spend hundreds of dollars on dental care, Dr. Adderley says children in the Bahamas under the public health care system receive dental services absolutely free. No kids age 0 to 18 pay for any dental work that they get in our setting. That includes fillings, cleanings, exams, fluoride treatment, bonding, anything else, and referrals to specialty services like orthodontics or braces. She says summertime is perfect for youngsters to stop in as the office is not busy. Dr. Adderley is hoping that Bahamians take advantage of this free medical care as not too many countries can boast of having free dental services for children. Right. During the summertime, I guess the kids, they're off enjoying themselves. Everyone's on vacation and whatnot. But I'd like to ask parents to think about it during the school year. And we recommend vacation time, Christmas vacation and summer vacation as a part of your back to school checklist or your going away checklist. You make sure that you bring your kids in before you leave so that you avoid the little rush. Because generally speaking, you know, we are Bahamians. We won't see any rush in the last weeks in July or first two weeks in August, but throughout the ending part of summer and then the first part of the school year, we see a lot of kids coming in. So we'd advise you to avoid the rush and come in now if you can or call. For more information or to book an appointment, Dr. Adderley says you can contact the Hawksbull or 8 Mile Rock Clinics. Stay with us, there is more news right after this.